Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, uh, I greet everyone in the mighty, wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we, we, we are happy again that we have an opportunity today to share the word of the Lord with you. Uh, and, and before I do that, I just want to take this time to really appreciate uh, my wife, um, who has been the woman behind uh, the camera uh, since the lockdown. So she has been tirelessly uh, uh, doing these videos. Um, all I just have to do is to prepare myself uh, to preach, and then she worries about the technical, uh, uh, um, you know, needs uh, and, and nitty gritties. So, so I really want to appreciate her. She has been doing a sterling uh, job, and 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 I'm, I can't complain. I'm happy with the quality of the videos that we have been producing, and I hope you're also happy with the sound and and the picture quality of the videos we've been doing uh, since uh, the introduction of the lockdown in the country. So, thank you, uh, uh, baby. I I, I thank God for you. And please continue uh, learning this and, and improving. Uh, and uh, trust me, you, you'll find this to be a very interesting hobby. Right, thank you. Um, let's just close our eyes for prayer as, as I'll be uh, sharing uh, some interesting uh, uh, topics, uh, particularly in this uh, month, June, which is not only a youth month, but also a month uh, in which I was born. So when June comes, I become very excited and very, uh, uh, you know, at my best because this is the month that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. So let's close our eyes for prayer. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to thank you uh, for this opportunity to share your word, Lord, and speak the truth in love and also not to condemn anyone because this is the premise uh, from which, Lord, the gospel must be preached. I want to thank you, Father, even as I pray for everyone who has set time aside to watch this message and to listen to this message. And not only for that, but also, Lord, that from here we, we, we strive, Lord, to do what your word uh, says we must do uh, because that's where the power uh, lies in, in us being able and willing uh, to do your word. In the mighty, glorious name of Jesus, I, I bring uh, into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ Jesus today. I pray. Everyone say, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right. Well, then, uh, today I, I, I've prepared a message here titled uh, 10 Signs uh, She or He Is Not Mr. or Miss Wright. Ten signs uh, he or she's not Miss or Mr. Right. So, so look, um, the, the, the life of being um, a single person is always a challenging one, I must say, um, because there, there comes a time when, when, when a single person is caught between a hard place and a rock, uh, where you are caught between the desire to marry and your fear uh, for marriage. And, and also, um, many of these fears are, are misdirected as they focus on life in marriage and not the person with whom that life must be shared with. Um, and, and this, I believe, is where uh, our focus must be, uh, not marriage itself. Uh, who we marry or who you marry uh, is key to that desired life. So, so, so we mostly focus on the institution of marriage uh, m rather than the person you are going to be married to. And, and when one makes that right choice, you, 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 you not have to worry about that marriage life. If you make a right decision in terms of who you marry, you do not have to worry about the marriage itself. Um, and, and, and because you'll have most of your challenges solved with the right decision of that person. So, so we're always caught who is that right person. And, and most people you, you hear cry about marriage, uh, they most refuse to accept that marriage is not bad, uh, but that their choice of who they marry was a bad one. All right, so, so people married bad people or made bad choices when it comes to marriage. And instead of taking the responsibility or accountability that in fact they, they, they missed the mark in terms of that decision making, that they blame the institution or the relationship of marriage. So, so the sooner we learn um, uh, from this, the better. And the challenge remains with most women that they are Focus is mostly on the wedding day. Most women, their focus is on the wedding day. They become so fixated um, 
uh, on walking through the aisle uh, that they ignore who will walk with them through the aisle. Let me repeat that most women, they are more fixated on wedding day, on the white dress, everyone letting and, and them feeling special and the makeups and, and, then, and all the rest, so that they, they, they ignore that, you know, the person with whom they should be walking that aisle. And also the challenge remains with most men that their focus is mostly on the looks of the woman. Uh, they become so fixated on what their eyes behold and how their bodies feel about the woman, that they ignore who they will walk uh, uh, through the aisle. This is not supposed to be like that. And a closer look and scrutiny uh, of the person is required and not only prayer. Let me repeat, I, I support prayer, but I'm also saying we must be intentional about scrutinizing the people with whom we want to spend life in marriage with. So don't only just pray, you pray and, and, and then you also uh, watch, you know, you watch and pray, watch and pray. The Bible says watch and pray. Don't only watch and not pray and don't only pray and not watch. You need the balance of the two. You watch and pray. Hallelujah. You watch and pray. So, so now, and, 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 and while, you know, most, most of us ask a question to say, how will I know Mr. Wright and, 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 and the rest? So, so, sometimes I believe that the question, as much as it may seem to be coming from a position of honesty, sometimes I, I think we become disingenuous in, in, our, in, in our questions because in, to, such, to a certain extent, it's not that we do not know. We know, but we've got a problem with the criteria set uh, by, by, by the scriptures. So, so and, and, and I must also say that when you look through the scriptures, you find one or two uh, cases where the Bible is very clear in terms of marriage, in terms of who you can marry uh, or who you may not marry. Uh, but, but, but generally speaking, there's quite a number of scriptures the Bible uh, uh, um, uses or that are uh, a couple of scriptures that, that would talk about the you know, uh, relationships in general. And, and I'll be relying on some of those scriptures today in addressing the, time, the 10 signs uh, he or she's not Mr. or Miss Right. Okay, so, so let's, let's start with the first one. The first one, we're going to find it in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 11, verse 2. 1 Kings, chapter 11, verse 2. It reads as follows. Uh, you must um, not intermarry with them, uh, for surely they will turn your hearts after their gods, yet Solomon uh, clung to his woman in love. So, and you'll remember that while this is said in 1 Kings 11, uh, 2, this is the very same call that Apostle Paul echoes or repeats uh, in your testament in terms of marriage uh, between believers and non-believers. So your Mr. or Miss Right or the 10th sign that this person is not, uh, uh, the first sign that this person is not your Mr. or Miss Right is that he or she is of a different kingdom. I know this is not what we want to hear, but this is the truth that we find in the scriptures, that this person uh, she or he is of a different kingdom. Remember that as a believer, the Bible says, you are now in the kingdom of God, you are now in the kingdom of light. So any person that is in the kingdom of darkness, any person that is not in the kingdom of God, he or she is not Mr. Right. It does not matter the, the size of their pocket, it does not matter their looks or, or their beauty, they are not Mr. or Miss Right for you. So, so the first sign, is this person is of a different kingdom or belongs to a different kingdom. I've seen believers you know, make their volition or make their own decisions. To many people that are non-believers, it's their choice. We will not change it. However, we will also not change. Their choice does not change what the scriptures uh, uh, prescribe to us, to say a believer cannot marry a non-believer. The same way God has not changed what he said in, in, in the Old Testament, to say don't intermarry, because you also realize that when, when and, and let me say this, when God spoke to Solomon, the issue between God and Solomon was not the number of women he had. Let me repeat it. The issue between God and Solomon was not the number of women he had. The issue was intermarriage. God was, is, very, is, very, is so serious about the issue of intermarriage that he even not, did not address the numbers. He just addressed to say, look, when you have taken from the people I've told you not to. 
So how many of us continue, despite the fact that God, we see God uh, 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 holding Solomon accountable to it, we, we still continue with it. We still uh, are in relationships with people that are not born again. We are prepared to marry people that are, that are not born again because all we want is just marriage. All we want is just wedding. But listen, there's life beyond wedding day. Because you will be joined together with this person. And, 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 and I must say to the pastors that please stop being forced to officiate such weddings. Because what are you saying as a pastor when you marry a believer, non-believer? Because your, 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 your conduct as a pastor of saying you are bringing these people together, a non-believer and a believer, you are bringing them together, it's unscriptural. Because the Bible says, how can light and darkness be yoked together? How can Satan and God have fellowship? So when you have a person of a different kingdom uh, uh, to that of God, uh, the, the kingdom of God and you are bringing them together as a pastor, I p personally believe through scriptures that that conduct is inconsistent with the scriptures. You have a right as a pastor, the same way people have got a decision in terms of who they marry, you also as a pastor have your own decision to say, because what you want me to do is inconsistent with the scriptures, I will not officiate your wedding. I will not bring the two of you together. I will not participate in the exchange of vows. It's just that sometimes as pastors, we have got a pressure, we, 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 we just do things, and, and later on, we, we, we preach this thing. But you've told people, you've allowed people, you've encouraged people to do it. So there's just that contradiction uh, and inconsistency among ourselves as pastors. So, so I said, if you are making notes, write this one down to say, please do not compromise. That when it comes to Mr. and Miss Wright, the first sign that this person is not your Mr. Wright or Miss Wright is that he is of a different kingdom. And then when we continue further, we look at Proverbs um, 19, we re we'll read verse 15. Proverbs 19, verse 15. So we are going to cover the second sign that this is not your mister or miss right. So it says, laziness brings on deep sleep and an idle soul will suffer hunger. So the second sign is that he or she is lazy. He or she is lazy. I've seen people, I've seen people, look, I, I, you, know, you know there's a difference between someone you call a hustler. I don't call any person a hustler. I just call people hard workers. It's either you're lazy or a hard worker. Not, not hustling. You know, so, so, so these this terms also have just provide some different, uh, uh, or, or attach some different connotations to, to issues. So, so here's the thing, that, that your mister, just to, you, you look at this thing. Is this person a hard worker or a lazy person? If this person is lazy, please my sister, please my brother, do not go. It does not matter the, the promises and the good English because trust me, brothers do talk deep English. They do talk, you know, talk deep English, particularly those in the church. But listen, you are not marrying language, you are not marrying English, you are marrying a person. So that person, English will not bring food in the house. Because let me tell you the danger. The danger with marrying a lazy person, whether him or her, is that some of these lazy people, you're going to fast in the bedroom. Let me say it. Some people are so lazy that they will make you fast in the bedroom. You are fasting now as a single person and you'll fast in your marriage. And now, trust me, you don't want that. You don't want that. So do not marry a lazy person. So if a person is lazy, just know that is the second sign that he or she is not Mr. Right. So you also look at, 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 at Proverbs 18 verse 9, which says, a lazy person is as bad as someone who destroys things. So when you are marrying a lazy person, then you know you are marrying a bad person. I mean, who would want to marry a bad person knowingly? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, already we, have, we see poverty around us. So why would you want to marry a lazy man? Why would you want to marry a lazy woman when we see what is happening around us? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I know this is not what we will address, but trust me, uh, 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 the fact that this person is lazy, it means it's a sign that he or she's not Miss or Mr. Right for you. So pass. Pass. Pass, pass. It does not matter how impressive they, they look like and how impressive they sound. Just know this is not Mr. Right. This is not Miss Right. Hallelujah. I believe that you are learning something and you are being blessed. And then we continue. 
And we look at the third sign, the third sign that he or she's not Mr. or Miss Right. We look at Proverbs 22, verse 24. Proverbs 22, verse 24. It says, do not make friends with an angry man and do not associate with a hot-tempered man. Listen to this. It says, do not make friends with an angry man and do not associate with a hot-tempered man. So this third sign that he or she's not Mr. or Miss Right for is that the person is easily angered and hot-tempered. The person is easily angered or hot-tempered. So, and here the Bible says, do not make friends and do not associate. So how much more marriage? I mean, if, if you take it at the first verse, it says, don't be a friend with this person. So why would you not want to be a friend with the person but continue to marry them? You know, and, and the issue of anger, we, we see what is happening around us, that, 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 that there's so much abuse. Women are abusing men. Yes, women are abusing men. Men are abusing women. There's abuse across the gender. And I understand I'm not downplaying the issue of gender-based violence, but I'm also not going to be dragged into gender-based violence when I know as a human being who has got an independent mind that there's women who are abusing men and there's men who are abusing women. And most of these things, you saw them in a relationship. You see these things as a single person, as a single man, as a single woman, that this person is hot tempered, that this person is easily angered. But because you are looking at the beauty, because you are looking at uh, looking forward for the wedding day and the white dress, you overlook these things. And when you are in marriage, you now complain about the very same things. You now become concerned about the very same things that, that, that you saw in a relationship or during the state of, of dating, and you had an opportunity to resolve those things, or you have an opportunity. To, to, to act then, but you ignored it. Now you want to act. There's kids in the pictures, there's houses in the pictures. You, you could have easily made that decision before. So I'm teaching you today that please, the, the, when you see a person that is easily ang angered and, and, and hot tempered, just know that is a sign. It's a third sign that this is not Mr. or Miss Right. And I repeat, it does not matter how impressive they sound. It does not matter how impressive they, they, they appear. They are simply just not Mr. Right or Miss Right. Pass. Third sign that this is not your Mr. Right or Miss Right. This person is easily angered or hot tempered. And we're going to look at sign number four. Remember, if you just joined us now, if you're just watching this now, we are talking about 10 signs. He or she's not Mr. or Miss Right. So we are now going to uh, uh, um, uh, sign number four. Sign number four, we are going to find it in Psalm 26 verse 4. Psalm 26 verse 4. It reads as follows. I do not see it with the safe men, nor keep company with hypocrites. Okay, let's read it again. Jesus. I do not see it with deceitful men, nor keep company with hypocrites. So the, the fourth sign is that he or she is deceitful and pretentious. He or she is deceitful. He or she is deceitful. So, so there are people that lie. Literally, they lie. And, and the most dangerous person is a person who lies and believes in their lies. So it says, do, I do not keep company, no, no keep company with hypocrites. The hypocrites are people with masks. They've got masks. How many people around you have got masks? Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Listen here, listen here, listen here. The fourth sign is uh, 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 she is or he is deceitful and pretentious or a hypocrite. So don't marry that person. Because if you marry a person who is deceitful, it, they, will be, they will deceive you in marriage. They will lie to you in marriage and you'll be complaining that this person never tells you the truth. No, it started even before a relationship. You knew that this person was deceitful. You knew that this person was a hypocrite, but you continued to marry them. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we bless the Lord, we bless the Lord, we bless the Lord. So that's a fourth sign that this is, uh, uh, this is not your Mr. Right or Miss Right. Uh, lying and, and, and pretentious and, and, and a hypocrite. Don't go there. Do not associate. So if the Bible says do not associate, how much more marry? It says don't, don't, don't associate with these people. But most of us, we still want to marry those people. They will lie to you. 
They will lie to you. Most people are married, and in their marriage, it's one lie from another. The Bible says, I'm concerning us that we move from one glory to another, but some people in their marriages, they are moving from one lie to another, one lie to another. And, and, and there's conflict because people are lying. There's conflicts because people are hypocrites. There's com- conflict because people are pretending or they're pretentious. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So, so that was the fourth sign that he or she is not Mr. or Miss Right. So we're talking, remember, ten signs, he or she is not Mr. or Miss Right. So let's go to the, uh, the fifth point. The fifth point, we're going to find it in Proverbs 2 verse 16. Proverbs 2 verse 16. It, it reads as follows. It will rescue you from the forbidden woman. From the stranger with seductive words, it will rescue you from forbidden women. Forbidden, so it means there's a forbidden person. There's someone that you should not be marrying. Forbidden. There's a man that you're not supposed to marry. There's a woman that you're not supposed to marry. They are forbidden. And so I'm saying the the fifth sign that he or she's not Mr. or Miss Right is that she or he is adulterous. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) He or she is adulterous. Eh? So here's the thing, and and I want to focus on this a little bit. When we look at the Bible, we, we, we are introduced uh, or we learn three types of adultery. Three types of adultery. And most of the time we talk of one adultery. And this is the adultery in this case. That, that li- listen, you cannot be involved in a relationship with a married woman or married man and, 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 and be happy when they divorce that they are marrying you. And believers do this. Believers do this. You break marriages and marry the person. Oh, Jesus. Do not marry an adulterous man or an adulterous woman. In fact, the reason why we have got so much divorce is because of these things. People are no longer prepared to resolve marital issues because they have got second choices. They have got options. So this, 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 because you, because you can just divorce and go and marry anyone else, it, 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 has, it has in fact devalued and, and disempowered the value or the need and the necessity of resolving conflicts in marriage and of forgiveness. People are no longer prepared to forgive because they know they can go and marry anyone else. And, and believe us, we are participating and partaking in such issues. So here says there's a forbidden woman, there's a forbidden man in your life. So, 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 so the fifth sign that this is not Mr. Right and the fifth sign that this is not Miss Right is that this person is an adulterer. Is an adulterer. The fact that this person is cheating his wife or a, or, or, or a husband with you does not mean they are Miss or Mr. Right for you. And in fact, let me tell you the sad truth and the painful truth. The painful truth is that this person will never leave their wives or husband for you. They will never. Until maybe they they are divorced. But ordinarily, they will not leave you. That's why sometimes they have to remind you that they are still married. And the danger with this this unfaithfulness is that sometimes you forget that this person is married and your expectations become like, uh, let's let's act like you are different. No, the person is still married. So adultery, when you see someone who is doing adultery, it's not a Mr. Right for you. It's not a Miss Right for you. That is the fifth sign. And people may not be comfortable to talk about it, but I'm saying it is in the word. Even if I fall off it, it's in the word. The word says eh, it will rescue you from the forbidden woman, from the stranger with seductive words. So you have, there's a forbidden man, there's a forbidden woman. So those are not your mister or miss right. Hallelujah. Macabro Shenterebe. Right, so we're moving to uh, 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 sign number six that he or she's not mister or miss right. We look at uh, 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 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 11. But now I'm writing to you not to associate, eh? listen, not to associate with anyone who claims to be a brother but is sexually immoral. Remember I spoke about sexual immorality a couple of weeks ago and I said sexual immorality includes issues of fornication, sexual immorality includes issues of prostitution, includes issues of same sex, uh, marriage. So, so this is sexual morality as the Bible puts it. Not me, but the Bible puts it as such. So, so, so listen, so the context of this is uh, do not associate. So, so me and I'm saying your first bet when you want to marry, go for a virgin. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Sexual immorality. So look, you are, you are seeing around. You, are see, you can see around that this person is, is involved in sexual immorality. You can see this brother is moving from one sister to another. You can see that sister is moving from one brother to another. So that is a sexual immoral person. And you want to marry them. No, don't. Don't. I understand forgiveness, but listen, if you, you've got your own choice. If you continue to marry them, it's your choice. But trust me, you are going to be going from one marital counseling to another. You, you never, you, you're not going to enjoy sex because they'll forever be comparing you with the exes they slept with. And just imagine, because this person, when, 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 you, when you are maintain, maintaining sexual purity, you've got self-control. But here is a person that now we are man. You are robbing yourself of pleasure. You are robbing yourself of this good thing, man. Eh? Don't do it. So, so, so the fifth, the sixth sign is, is, is that he or she is sexual immoral, greedy, slanderous, and drunkard. There, there are people in the church that, that are drinking. For whatever reason, I don't, I, I, I don't get into the reason, but they are drinking. They they given themselves over to alcohol, and 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 and, and even even women. Even women. So you marry this person knowing very well that they are drunkard. And when you are in marriage, you, 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 this person now drinks, this person now abuses you, this person no longer comes home at, at, on time and they forever out or they have forever gone out and you are complaining. But you could have addressed this thing before. Because you saw this person, person loves drinking but you still went ahead to marry them. What are you expecting now? What is killing most of people in marriage is that you're married to change a person, and this person never changed. I mean, if, if a believer with the Bible still finds it difficult to obey God, when a man, when a man, rather make a choice now, looking at this criteria, and maybe if things don't work out, at least you can satisfy yourself that you've done your part. But you can't just go into a hole, seeing that it's a hole, and expect that it's not a hole. It's a surface. Doesn't work that way. So it's, do not even, it says, sexual immoral, greedy, adulterer, or verbal abuser, a drunkard, or a swindler, with such a man, do not even eat. It says, don't even eat with that person. But listen, a simple thing of eating. It says, do not even eat with that person, but you want to go ahead and marry such a person. It says, greedy. Greedy. There are women that are greedy, there are men that are greedy. You can see them now before you, are, you, you, you marry them, but, but pass. So that's a sign, that's a sign that he or she is not Mr. or Miss Right for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's then move on and cover uh, uh, sign, sign number seven. Sign number seven, uh, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 14. 2 Thessalonians 3, 14. It says, And if any man obey not our words by this epistle, not, note that man, note that man, and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. He says, note that man, if what, if this, if, if any man obey not our words. So, so sign number seven, he or she walks in, in disobedience towards the scriptures. He or she walks in disobedience towards the scriptures. So he says, do not associate with such a person. He says, don't hate them, but do not associate with them. So do not a sign that this person is not your Mr. Right. And the sign that this person is not your Miss Right is that they walk in disobedience towards the scriptures. And let me tell you the reason why you do not, in fact, have to associate with them or no marry them. is because if they can't obey God, if they can't fear God, if they can't listen to God, who are you? Who are you? If they can't listen to the person who created them, who are you? Who are you? That's why some of you have got uh, the blood pressure in marriage because you married a person uh, who was working in disobedience to our scriptures and you were praising them that time. And now you are stuck with them. Because the, 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 the sin you promote and the sin you encourage, one day it comes and bites you when it's done back to you. Hallelujah. 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 So that, that was sign number seven. Sign number seven. He or she walks in disobedience towards the scriptures. So this is a sign that he is not Mr. Right. This is a sign that she is not Miss Right for you. All right. So, so we're moving on to uh, uh, sign number eight. So sign number eight, uh, we're going to read Proverbs 24 verse 21. Proverbs 24 verse 21. It reads as follows. My son, fear the Lord and the king. And do not associate with rebellious. My son, fear the Lord 
and the king, and do not associate with rebellious. So sign number eight is that this person, he or she is rebellious. This person, he or she is rebellious. So, so and, and one, one of the observations that, 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 I've, uh, that I've made is that most of us are, are comfortable and, and, and encourage rebellion. Uh, when this person is rebelling against their parents, when this person is rebelling in church, when this person is rebelling against authority, we are okay with that. We encourage it. We call it independent thinking. We call it whatever. We, we, we call it you know, with these fancy, fancy words. And, and, and I'm saying to you that, that go ahead and marry a person who is rebellious against their parents. Go and marry a person who is rebellious against authority. Go and marry a person who is rebellious anywhere in their lives. And trust me, they are going to show you flames in marriage. They will show you flames. If they cannot listen to God, if they cannot listen to authority, who are you? What makes you think that they will not rebel against you? Of course, most of you, you know you've married rebellious people. You can't tell it. You can't say it now, but so you are burning inside your marriage because this person is rebellious. You can't tell them nothing. Ketile, ketile. And you must realize that this rebellion that you are currently experiencing in your marriage, you saw it before marriage and you were okay with it. You, 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 you seem to be encouraging it. You seem to be impressed with it. But now that rebellion is coming for you. And let me tell you, now that you are single, if you see someone being rebellious, don't go and walk the aisle with them. It's going to come back bind you. Trust me, the fact that they are rebelling against uh, uh, their parents today and, 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 and not you does not mean that they are, go they are not going to rebel against you in marriage. In fact, they are going to do it. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when they are going to rebel it. They are going to rebel against you. So sign number eight is that he or she is rebellious. Don't marry that person. That's a sign that this person is not Mr. Right. This person is not Miss Right. It says, do not associate with this person. And we look at, at sign number nine. Sign number nine. As we're about to close, sign number nine. Sign number nine, we're going to uh, read uh, Proverbs 20, verse 19. Proverbs 20, verse 19. He who reveals secrets is a constant gossip. Avoid the one who bubbles with his lips. I'm going to read it again. Hallelujah. It says, he who reveals secrets is a constant gossip. Avoid avoid the one who bubbles with his lips. So, sign number nine, he or she speaks a lot about other people's issues. He or she speaks a lot about other people's issues. And, and, and I was telling my wife earlier on that I found a, a definition of gossip in the Bible. That because sometimes you think gossip is, about, is, is, is talking bad about other people in the absence. No, but gossip also means talking the truthful issues of other people in the absence to someone without their permission. I'm going to repeat. If I come to you and tell you that I've done something and I confide in you, and you go and tell someone to say, hey, this is what Pastor Tabo is doing, without you talking with me first, without you getting permission from me, if you can discuss my secret further with someone else, that is gossip. <laughs> that is gossip. Read the scripture. That is gossip. So I'm saying, the sign that this person, he or she is not Mr. Right or, 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 or Miss Right, is that they, they, they reveal people's secrets to you. And let me tell you the danger. The danger is that the person who reveals other people's secrets to you, they are also going to reveal your secrets to other people. Hallelujah. If, if we were to say, let, let's all go through a, a, our x-ray in marriage. Let's go through the marriage x-ray. All of us, we go through the marriage x-ray. You will be shocked what you are going to see. You will be shocked what you are going to see. Right. So, so the fact that this person comes and, 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 and talks uh, about people's issues to you without their permission, because when people come to you and confide in you, they are not confiding in your marriage. They are confiding in you. To your partner in marriage. And you can detect this even early before marriage, that if this person you, you want to spend a, a, a marriage life with, if this person is talking about other people and, and telling you about other people's stuff, that's a sign that this person is a gossiper and 
this person uh, 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 is a sign that he or she is not Mr. or Miss Right. Do not associate with this person. It says avoid this person. Avoid. So how much more marrying them? Because I, I can tell you, you can go ahead. The fact that then, because you see, when a person is talking about you, they will not tell you that they are talking about you. You you marry this person who is talking about other people. Before you know it in marriage, your issues will be known by the neighbors and by your enemies because you have married a person who babbles with their lips. You have married a person who does not keep secrets. You have married a gossiper. Don't be uh, surprised when they gossip about you and you'll be surprised. How can you gossip about my, you, me as your husband or uh, me as your wife? It's because you have allowed it when you were still dating, when you had an opportunity to say, eh, eh, this person is wrong for me. Because when you got excited that they're not talking about you, now they're talking about you, you've got a stomach it. You've got a stomach it. So this is sign number nine. Uh, sign number nine. He or she speaks a lot about other people's issues. And we are now closing. We are going to go to sign, 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 number, uh, sign number 10, the last sign. The last sign for today. The last sign was that, that, that he or she is not Mr. or Miss Right. We are going to look at Luke 16 verse 18. Luke 16 verse 18. Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery. And he who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. So sign number 10, that he or she is not Mr. or Miss Right, is that he or she is divorced and the husband or wife is still alive. <laughs> Mercy on us. Sign number 10, he or she is divorced and the husband or wife is still alive. So the Bible says here in Luke 16, 18, that anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery. And he who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. So now, unless you are purposefully intending or you are purposefully sinning to say, I am planning to go and commit adultery. And I know this, this is something we don't talk about. Remember I said to you there's three types of adultery the Bible talks about. One is where you're sleeping with someone or you become unfaithful or you do not keep the marriage a bed a, 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 a pew by, by going out and sleeping with other people while you are married, that's adultery. Another adultery is if a man uh, looks lustfully at any other woman, he has committed adultery in his heart, that's the second adultery. And the third adultery is when you remarry while your, your husband or wife is still alive. That's adultery. And it's so, it's so shocking that, that this is becoming prevalent in the church and we're okay with it. And some sisters are okay that other men divorce their wives and they come and marry them. What, what has happened? Why are we so desperate? Why do we need more of marriage more than we need God? Why, why are we so desperate for marriage that, that the scriptures that we study every day, they fly through the window, they enter into one ear and go into out with another ear because of marriage. When it comes to Linyalo, people are prepared to do anything for Linyalo. People are prepared. We are prepared to do anything for Linyalo. Even if they say, Lasha mudimo koro unyalwe, utoma lasha mudimo just for unyalwe. Oh my God, me karaba shanderebe. Sign number 10 that this is not your Mr. Right is that this person is divorced and their husband or wife is still alive. Because when you marry that person, you are committing adultery. You are committing adultery. Does not matter what people are going to teach you. Here's the scripture. You are committing adultery. Uh, will God forgive you? I don't know. Will God understand? I don't know. I'm not in God's shoes. I'm only telling you what the scripture says. It says you're committing adultery. And the, that's why I said earlier on that the, one of the reasons why people are no longer interested in fighting for their marriages and are no longer interested in solving issues is because there's someone who's prepared to marry them. There's someone who's always prepared to discard and disregard what the scriptures prescribe by marrying that person. If people knew that when they divorce and their husbands or wives, they, they are still alive, if they knew that no one will want to marry them, do you think they will divorce? They won't. And one could be asking, Muruti, okay, what must I do if I no longer enjoy my marriage? Ask, check why you're no longer enjoying your marriage. Because one of the reasons why you could not be enjoying your marriage is because you've got high and unnecessary expectations and you've got comparison. 
And another reason why possibly you are not enjoying your marriage is because one of you maybe is backsliding or has backslided already. So, so when God is not the when God is not an authority, when God is no longer the head of the man, what would you expect? But here's the issue: the elephant in the in the room is that there's so much remarriage happening around us. And this is really, really uh, uh, insulting the, the principle or the issue of forgiveness. This is disempowering the need for forgiveness. This is disabling us from practicing forgiveness. So, 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 just imagine how Christian it will be if someone comes to you and says, Isha, I want to marry you and I've divorced. And just ask a simple question. Is your husband or wife still alive? And if the answer is no, uh, if the answer is yes, just say, Hey, my brother or my sister, I, will, I want marriage, but not at the expense of my relationship with God. Because you are intentionally sinning. And that, that is the problem I have with us as believers. That most of us as believers, we don't, we don't, we don't sin because of duress. We sin intentionally. We, we plan our sins, man. We plan to sin as believers. Let, let, let's talk the truth. Let's be frank with one another. When I sin, I plan. It's not like there's a... I mean, just imagine we sin without a gun on our head. How much more when a gun on our head? That's why the, the Bible says you have not resisted uh, to a point of shedding blood. So we even compromise without shedding blood. How much more when we are supposed to shed blood? Most of us will even say God doesn't exist. Most of us will say I, I, I mean, uh, this thing I was coerced in believing uh, uh, Jesus or, or, or believing in the Bible. Just when we are just free like this. I mean, we are, we, are, we are sinning freely. We are sinning freely. So, sign number 10, as I close, is that he or she is divorced and the husband or wife is still alive. If you love your relationship with God, that is your mister. That, that is your, it, it's, it's, not, it's not your mister right. And that is not your miss right. Because when you marry that person, it does not matter the size of their pocket, their looks, and, and the explanation they'll be giving to you. Simple thing, there's no remarriage when your wife or husband is still alive. I understand the part of if you divorce or if any man divorce except for adultery or for sexual immorality or the rest. But here's another scripture that talks about forgiveness. How many times must I forgive my brother? And Jesus is 70 times 70. So where has forgiveness gone? in your marriage such that you are prepared to divorce and go and marry someone and cause them to commit adult and you also commit adult. So let me quickly recap in terms of the 10 signs that this is not your Mr. Right or Miss Right. I said the first sign is that he or she is of a different kingdom. And the second sign I said he or she is lazy. And the third sign I said the person is easily angered or hot tempered. Number four, I said he or she is deceitful and pretentious. Number five, I said he or she is adulterous. Number six, I said he or she is a sexual immoral, greedy, slanderous, and drunkard. And number seven, I said he or she walks in disobedience towards the scriptures. Number eight, he or she is rebellious. Number nine, he or she speaks up a lot about other people issues and number 10 I said he or she is divorced and the husband or wife is still alive and as I close for today I quickly want to say if you have looked at this if you have looked at this and you are satisfied that all these uh, 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 10 things it's a tick 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 you look at numbers 36 verse 6 and I'll read it uh, for you from my phone numbers 36 verse 6. Numbers 36 verse 6. Let's quickly look at it. Numbers 36. Numbers 36 verse 6 reads as follows. This is the thing which the Lord doeth command concerning daughters of uh, Zelophehad, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best. Only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. So once you have covered all these things and it's all ticks that this person is not lazy, this person is not adulterous, this person does not gossip and, and, and other many other things. If it's all tick, the Bible then says, or God says, uh, uh, Mary uh, 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 to whom you think is best. So is this person best? If the answer is yes, marry that person. 
I thank you for watching and I want to pray with you as I close. Father, I want to thank you and I pray, Lord, that this message brings the truth as you have intended it, but over and above the truth, may people hear and experience your love and our love through this message. In the mighty glorious name of Jesus, I pray, Holy Father, there's no reason for us to compromise when it comes to marriage. And I pray that you will strengthen my brother and sister now, that even if they are in a relationship with these people, I pray that they will have the courage to break out of that relationship. There's no force, there's no jurors for them to remain in relationships that are in contrary to your word. In the mighty glorious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. God bless you. If you find this video challenging, thought-provoking, and, 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 and blessing to you, please uh, just, uh, you lose nothing, just press the share button and, and share it with many people and, and, and let uh, someone be helped and let someone be encouraged through this video. God bless you, love you, amen.